What's up guys? It's Sunday and I'm excited because today's gonna be fun. We're talking about our words today. How we can use them, how can we be nice, and how we can avoid being mean. Um, I've got my friends Zach and Lincoln here in a minute. We're gonna play an awesome game. We're gonna kind of show you what our words can do and we're gonna talk about them. So you guys buckle up tight. This is gonna be a fun one. We're about to jump into the game. I will see you guys over there. What's up guys? So I got my friends Lincoln and Zach here today and we're going to play a game with all of you guys called Extreme Close Up. So the deal of the game, you have to figure out what item it is. We're gonna see it super zoomed in, so we have to figure that out. Let's jump in. Oranges. We haven't started, so apples. Bananas. Alright. Okay. It's not even started. The game has not started. You have okay. to Okay, identify, identify red letters. letters. Nope, that's not that. Block it's letters. This. this. What's this? Oh, lion. Avocados. Lion. It's not avocados. It's a lion. I'm gonna go with no. That's We're into kangaroo. Turtle. Cat. Turtle. Cat. Turtle. Cat. 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 I think it's a lion. Turtles don't have fur. Like cinnamon twist. It's not oh, in the angle. It's a real shirt. Sure. Sure. for the month. Alrighty, so we are going to be in Luke 16 10. So let's hop right into it. Alrighty, so first word is suppose. We are going to put our thinking faces on and tap our chin. So suppose that you can be trusted. Make pinky promise with yourself. Alright, connect your pinkies. So suppose that you can be trusted with something very small. Very small. All right, that's our first half. So, suppose you can be trusted with something very small. Then you can also 
be trusted. We're gonna make a pinky promise again. Then you can also be trusted with something very large. <laughs> All right, so let's put our two parts together. Suppose you can be trusted with something very small. Then you can also be trusted with something very large. And that is in Luke 16.10. Great job, you guys. Bye. What's up, guys? So like I said, we're talking about words today. And I have my friend Lincoln here. And Lincoln's so been, nice. well, it's just been a day. And you have those days every once in a while. Mm -hmm. You're just, oh, and you, you just need some encouragement. So I decided to make a little box for my friend of Lincoln and give him some encouraging words that he wow. gets to look at. So Man. hopefully to help him build up and... And feel better and be encouraged. What? So what kind of words we got in there? Well dressed. Hey, that's true. That's true oh. for sure. I'm capable? Capable. He's capable of a lot oh. of awesome things. I'm dependable. Dependable. Yep. Oh my gosh. Loyal. I'm loyal. Wow, these are such nice yeah. things. I was really just thinking that they would help build you up. Smart? Yeah. Whoa. These are all things that I believe about you. Oh, I like so, this one. Cool. Yeah, that's definitely that's my that's favorite. Really good one. Wow, dude, that's so yeah. cool. So I thought these words would be nice and kind of help build you up and remind you who you are and what you can do. You stink! Oh. Man, I've had such a bad day. Oh. Like the worst day, I woke up and then I saw him in my apartment. And then I went to work and I played basketball and we lost four times. Yeah. Four, not once, not twice, definitely not three, but... Four times. That's just unbelievable. And so now I'm a loser today, and I'm just not having a good day, and it's just a bad, bad week. Bad week. So why did you write that I was ugly? Because you were on my team and we lost all four times. You said I was dumb? Yeah, you played dumb in basketball today. I'm weird? Yeah, you had a weird celebrations when you made a pass. I'm smelling. Yeah, I smelled you after the games. Didn't smell good either. Well, I don't like any of this. I'm boring? Yeah! Lazy? Yeah, you are lazy. That's lazy. why I didn't do good today, because you're lazy. Well, Zach, I hate that. Whoa, 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 whoa. What do we got going on here, guys? I had a bad day. You had a bad day, but a terrible did you day. think about the words that you used with Lincoln? No. So you've had a bad day. I've had a terrible day. Do you think your words are going to make Lincoln's day any better? Well, that wasn't my primary concern. Are but your maybe... words making your day any better? No. So, I've got a story for you guys that maybe we can go over, and I'll talk about it, and we'll see, and maybe we can figure out a better way to use our words. How does that sound? You still smell. That's good. <laughs> All right, we'll work on it. <laughs> So that was a funny example, and well, don't worry. Zach and Lincoln aren't actually mad at each other. <sighs> they did lose four times in basketball today, though. So that's them, but um, don't worry. It's not serious. But what is serious is our words. You see, our words matter. Words that build up, well, they help somebody feel better. Lincoln might have been playing, but... Words like that will help grow somebody, help them feel better, help them feel confident. And so they're important. And words like Zach's will tear somebody down, even if you're having the worst of days. Using bad words, well, they don't help anyone. They don't help you feel better. They don't help the other person feel better. In fact, it usually just makes both people feel worse. Now... We've got some cool stories to talk about what our words really mean. And we are going to be looking in Ephesians. So Ephesians is a letter. It's a letter written by Paul to the church of Ephesus. So about 2,000 years ago, the church of Ephesus needed some help. And Paul wanted to write to them to help them out. And so this is one thing that he said. So this is what Paul thinks and what Paul says about how we should treat each other. It's going to be in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 29 and it says don't use foul or abusive language let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them so i think that's really important i think it's vital to remember that 
because, well, the Bible doesn't really talk about everything. There are some areas in the Bible where Paul doesn't specifically say, or Jesus doesn't specifically tell us exactly what to do. He doesn't tell us exactly what to do, but with these words, he tells us exactly. Use them to build up and not tear down. So we're going to dive in to what that really means and how we can use that in a minute. But first, we got this awesome worship. It's a new song. I hope you guys enjoy it and dance along. I'll see you guys in a minute. <laughs>
wow, that's a fun song. I really love it. I hope you guys do as well. So we're talking about words and why they're important. And well, just like with Zach and Lincoln, we see that they can build up or they can tear down. They can make a day or ruin a day. In fact, you know Andrew, right? Somebody called him today to tell him thank you and it made his day because their words mattered. So Mr. Andrew's day was made because someone used their words. And I think we've all experienced days where somebody used their words and they made a difference, good or bad. Somebody said thank you or told you good job or pointed out something cool you did or someone tore you down, said something they didn't like about you, pointed out something you're insecure about. Either way, we know that words have power, and yet, we still struggle to use them sometimes. Sometimes we find ourselves saying the very things that hurt us. Because we're human. We all make mistakes. But luckily we have an example to look forward to, and that's Jesus. And he calls us to use words wisely. Now you may be thinking, how? Sometimes I just say things and I don't mean to. Well, there's a few things we can practice. The first is slowing down. If you find yourself frustrated, if you find yourself angry, this isn't even like a Bible tip necessarily. This is just for life. Slow down. My favorite thing is to take a deep breath in and out. And you might still be mad. And sometimes it's okay to be mad. But you might stop yourself from saying something that's not okay to say. So step one is slow down. Step two is pray. If you find yourself frustrated, just pray, God, give me peace. Or give me patience. Or even help me not to say what I want to say. Because sometimes we want things that just aren't good. So, Jesus' life was all about hope. He constantly taught about hope and he brought hope with his words. He brought truth and love and grace all with his words. So I want you guys to think about that. How can you bring hope? How can you bring love and grace with your words? And instead of tearing people down, how can we help? And that's not just for you. That's for your friends and for the people around you. If you hear somebody tearing somebody else down, how can you step in and help, even if it's scary? Can you go ask a teacher? Can you get some friends and go talk to the one friend who is being mean? Maybe you can just step in and say, hey, that's not cool. Let's not talk like that. Whatever it is, think about ways that you can spread peace and love with your words. Our question of the day is how or why do your words matter? Why are they important? What is it that makes your words so important? Discuss that with your family, with your parents around you, or maybe some friends, and figure out what is it about for words? Why are they important? And how can we use them better? Thank you all so much for watching today. I enjoy every single week with you guys, online or in person. And I'm glad you guys are. I will see y'all next week and I hope you have a wonderful week. Bye guys.